The easiest way to change the color of anything inside of your photos is using this slider right here. It's found inside of Lightroom under masking. It's simple, it's effective, but now in the latest version of Lightroom, there's an even better way to selectively edit the colors inside of your photos. A few weeks ago, if you remember from my last Lightroom tutorial, we were shooting some photos at Bruce Peninsula. And the one thing that I love about Bruce Peninsula is it has that forbidden Kool-Aid Gatorade color of water. And we love this spot so much that we wanted to go back and shoot the same thing at sunset. But the challenge with sunset is once you have that golden hour light, that orangey hue tone of light, it kind of washes everything out and the color of the water doesn't end up having that same color of blue. So today I'm gonna to show you three easy ways to adjust the colors inside of your photos. We'll start with that beginner friendly method that you probably already know and we're gonna end with a new feature that Lightroom now has that makes it so much better and so much more powerful when you're trying to add or remove or increase the colors in specific portions of your image. Here's our first example. We have these sunglasses, they're red, and so it's really easy to just go down to the HSL, you can grab this little color picker, and then you can click and drag on a portion of your image. So if I click on the red area and I drag up, it makes them more yellow. If I drag down, it makes them more red. But that's about the extent of what I'm able to do. The HSL sliders or the hue slider, hue meaning color, doesn't really let you go farther than one adjacent hue. Meaning I can really only take that orangey red color and either make it more yellow or I can slide it to the left and make it more red and more magenta, but, but that's it. So I'm gonna go up to my masking and you'll notice I've already got a few masks on this image. You can ignore those. We're gonna go create new mask. We're gonna select object. So there's multiple ways you can select the objects inside of your scene. You can select people, you can select backgrounds, you can do a manual paintbrush. But in this case, because the car is really well defined, we're gonna select brush. And then I'm gonna do this really loose brush over my car. Well, not my car, I, I wish it was my car. <laughs> and now we've got our car pretty much selected. So all I have to do now is come down to that slider I showed you at the beginning, and now I can slide it all the way to the left. I can make the car purple, I can make it blue, I can make it red. You'll notice that it's also over-selected, so it's got the, the brake discs and the lights on the side are changing color. So if you wanted to fine tune that, what you'd have to do, go into subtract and you could either use object. In fact, let's try that. And I'm gonna make my brush size really small and then I'm gonna brush over that. Perfect, it removed that light. I can kind of rinse and repeat. I can select the back one. I can select the guy's face, the brake discs. And once I'm all done, that will fix it so that I'm only selecting the body of the car. Now that's a really straightforward example where the subject was really easy to select. But what if I have this photo of Chris sitting on the couch and I wanna select the couch? Well, what I can do is instead of saying select subject, I can actually say select color range. What I'll do is I'll pick that tool and then I'll select an area of the couch that kind of represents all the colors that I wanna select. And you can see it's kind of gone crazy and selected all the red in all the photo. So I'm actually gonna take that refine brush and drag it down so that I've still got the couch selected. Now, one thing to take note of is that by default, Lightroom shows the overlay in red. And because the couch is red, it makes it a little bit harder to see. So what you can actually do is you can actually say, you can change the color of the overlay to green or whatever you want. But I'm actually gonna go down here and say image on black and white. Now it's showing me, okay, this is what you've got selected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another subtract and I'm gonna do a brush and I'm gonna start to brush out all of the areas where I do not want to change that red color. And if you wanna to toggle the selection on and off, if you hit O on your keyboard, that basically triggers this little guy right here to either show or hide the overlay. And then I can do the same thing. I can come in here, I can change the couch to whatever color I want. Now, in this case, if let's say the couch was yellow, typically yellow's gonna be a little bit brighter. So I might wanna go in and then say, maybe I don't know, adjust the exposure, boost the shadows a little bit. And, and now you can see that the selection, I, I still need to do a little bit of refining around the legs. 
But what if the object that you're trying to change the color of has no color to begin with? Like in this photo of Will, his jacket doesn't have any color. So if I was to go ahead, create that mask and try to change the hue and the saturation, you'll notice that I can only take it so far. Even if I boost the saturation all the way to 100%, and let's say I wanna make this jacket look yellow, well, even when I slide the hue all the way, this jacket doesn't really have a lot of color. So instead, I'm gonna zero that back out. We're gonna leave the saturation where it is, and we're gonna go down to Lightroom's latest addition to the masking tab, which is curves. Now, if you know anything about curves, well, if you don't know anything about curves, you can check out this video here, but curves are extremely powerful. It's essentially an all-in-one contrast, hue, saturation adjustment that allows you to shift one group of tones to another group of tones. And to demonstrate that, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna grab the blue tone curve, and you can see right in the graph, it represents blue and the opposite of blue, which is yellow. So if I start to drag that down, I go, you know, let's make that more yellow. Now we have really fine grain control over where we're adding the color. But essentially the tone curve is a representation of all the tones inside of your image where the middle of the graph represents those gray colors or those mid-tones. The upper portion of the graph represents the highlights or those white tones, and the bottom portion of the graph represents the shadows. Now, when you're changing color, blacks tend to stay black and whites tend to stay white, which is why tone curves are extremely important because it allows you to go in and tweak exactly where you wanna add those colors. Now, you might look at this and go, well, I don't want that color of yellow. Well, if you understand color theory, let's say you know this is maybe a little bit too yellow and we wanna add a little bit more red. Well, if I add a little bit of red to that yellow, now we have a little bit more of like a vibrant orangey color, which maybe again is too much for the look you're going for. And maybe this is still a little bit too dull, but if I go back to the default tone curve, the just standard contrast curve, and I start to drag that up, now we can actually make Will's jacket look like the right amount of hue and the right amount of lightness or brightness. But what if you're not looking to make drastic color changes? Well, 90% of the time, I will start with one of my presets. And it's a great way to save time and pretty much get me to a 90% edit before I go in and I make those masking adjustments and those tone curves adjustments to really fine tune the colors inside of my image. And if you wanna find any of my presets, all of those will be linked down in the description below. But looking at this photo, this is where we get back to the masking adjustments that I made. So if I check out the one that I made for the sky, by default, the sky didn't have that much color in it, or it did, but I felt like it was a little bit too blown out and a little bit too bright. So when I turn that mask on and I go into my blue tone curve, you can actually see how what I've done is I've lowered that upper portion of the highlights so that instead of being super bright and super white, I can lower the tonality and then introduce more color into that area. And then in the water, I did the same sort of thing with the blue curve, but because I wanted to have that Kool-Aid forbidden color of like cyan teal water, I actually went over to the red tone curve and the opposite of red is cyan. So if I take that curve and I lower it down, you can see just how quickly I'm able to introduce exactly the color that I want into my photo. Even if you don't wanna make drastic adjustments to the colors in your image, using this tone curve method is a great way to subtly add more color contrast or more pop to your images. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more of the adventure behind how we captured this photo, you can check out this video here. And if you wanna see more Lightroom tutorials like this, I'd recommend checking out this video here. Until the next one, go shoot photos.